All right, guys, welcome back. I'm kind of watching CEMI right now, so let me quickly see if we might snag a trade on this one. It's at a perfect double top here on the five minute. You can see it. 78 could be an entry. 80 getting chipped away. Yeah, it could have worked. Would have been a scalp trade. I would have not looked for a home run or something, but a uh, percent or so could have been squeezed out. Um, wait, let me still watch this one here at 76. This could be the beginning of the backside though on CEMI. Why do I have my headphones in? Hold on. Yeah, it's a, you know, I I missed this whole run for some reason. I, I wasn't really looking at CEMI so much. Um, I did one tiny trade on it over here, but after that, it was kind of gonzo for me. 77 holding, yeah, that was, this move, I think there's definitely a little bit of upside potential on this ticker, but I don't know. I feel like I missed this whole move and now I'm trying to squeeze like a little scratch out of it. Scalp, mm, I don't know. Either way, I'm up right around 367 right now, $367. Um, uh, you know, CEMI, this, this was an interesting ticker for sure. Um, well, first of all, guys, welcome back. It's Monday, it's April 5th here, and it's 9.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So happy to be back here, ready for another week. Last week was very slow, and we're gonna go through some news articles today before the market opens um, that that say exactly what a lot of us has, have been thinking. So kind of interesting there. Um, but let's, let's quickly talk about CEMI first, US Diagnostic Company. Um, U.S. Uh, announced the U.S. commercial launch of diagnostic tool um, to differentiate COVID-19 and flu. Actually sounds pretty good. There's always been a lot of confuse between those. Yeah, that was the little move I was waiting for. <clears throat> Overall, 17 million float, 71 million mark cap, up 45% pre-market. I mean, yeah, it all sounds pretty good. I, I didn't really like the way the pre-market action has been going. Um, huge resistance in this area as well. Um, maybe move here to six and then above, but it's overall, I uh, just, you know, it's, it's, it's a rough looking ticker, um, but you know, we're having some decent volume coming in now. It just, you know, can we stay above this 180 uh, tick move, simple moving average, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not crazy about this ticker, but it, it could kind of amount to something at one point. And one ticker I'm a little bit more excited about, but the price is a little bit iffy is um, NNOX, Nano X Imaging, Israel Medical Device Company, 34 million flow, $2 billion market cap. That's really on the high end. You guys you guys know that I'm usually looking for companies um, much uh, smaller. So usually at 500 million is, is kind of my cutoff. Um, that's when it becomes more of a mid cap. I'm looking for the small caps, right? Mm -mm 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 -mm. So yeah, flow nearly under 50 million. No, actually, you know, I don't think I wrote the 500 million here, but you know, we talk about it so much. Um, where's my post? There it is. What I do like about this company is the news looks really good. Um, they have x-ray technology uh, to replace the current um, technology, uh, tech, um, x-ray technology um, could reduce costs. And also I read somewhere here that has less uh, radiation as well. Here we go. It's compact, lighter, and emits less radiation. So that sounds like pretty good, big news. I mean, every dentist has x-rays, uh, every hospital. I mean, it's, it's big news. Um, they are competing with some of the big boys, GE here, Siemens, I'm actually not sure um, what this one is, Kanin Kijiki. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. Uh, but I do like what I'm seeing here on this, uh, this company. Um, we're right now, you know, all time highs was at 95, roughly. So let's go here to the four hour. And then you can see here we, you know, had a really strong move towards this huge resistance on around 75. We pulled back to around 60. And now we're moving back up again. So this one looks like it's on a healthy um, upward strand, decent volume so far, just pre-market alone. So 
I do kind of like what I'm seeing here on this ticker. Um, I, this is the one I traded the most. Unfortunately, I did miss the you know initial 7 a.m. run up. So both on CMI, CEMI, and NNOX, I missed actually the good front side move, um, which is fine. I did a little bit of dip trading and you know was able to make some profits, but uh, not really enough to move the needle too much. But I do have a little bit of cushion here, so that's nice. Um, so yeah, those are definitely the two takers I'm looking at right now. I did a small trade on SPFR. This is a SPAC. And um, the, reason, the reason I did a small trade on SFPR, uh, SPFR is I was actually looking for a swing trade entry on this one for, um, oops, I have a limit order open here that I shouldn't, um, for a while. Um, I never really pulled the trigger on it because I didn't have funds available. We had this big move here to the upside. I got excited, but um, I was going through some of the headlines on this company and um, there's definitely a few things I'm not super stoked about. Let me go back here. So like I said, this is a SPAC and um, they're looking to acquire a um, 3D printer company. Uh, I think it's Metal 3D Printing. Um, the problem is, and there's a few investigations into this company, um, it looks like it was for a very small share size. Um, of the actual acquisition. And it, it just, it seemed like there was a lot of misleading um, PR. So now it's being investigated. And I think that's why the sell off is so high here and it's not really able to hold its highs. Um, otherwise, the 3D printing company that they're looking to acquire is actually pretty hot. And uh, it's getting a lot of news right now because of ARC Space, the new ETF that went public. And this ETF is, um, you know, throwing a bunch of space companies, a bunch of 3D printing companies. Actually, let's quickly go to it. Um, Arc Invest, right here we go. This is it. This one just launched uh, last month on the 30th. These are all of the what are the things that they're looking for: orbital aerospace, suborbital enabling technologies. Um, and that's including robotics, 3D printing, and um, these kind of things. So that's exactly where this company falls in. And actually, if you go through here, their top 10 holdings, you could see one of their top 10, their, one of their biggest holdings is 3D printing ETF. And then you could go to their 3D printing ETF and, um, you know, that's where, that's where you're like, okay, well, you know, this is a huge field if that's one of their top holdings. Um, you could check out some of these uh, typical, com uh, these other companies here, but... Um, SPFR is uh, definitely at the least going to be a sympathy play. So that's why they're getting some attention. Uh, unfortunately, um, just the SPAC overall looks to not be as legit. I know a lot of you guys are interested in IGIC. Um, if you guys have even been here for you know a few weeks or even probably a week, you probably know I'm not super interested in companies that sell off this much. I'm usually looking for companies that are holding their highs uh, and not selling off more than 30% from pre-market highs. Even, you know, ideally only 25% pullbacks. Um, I mean, IG, uh, I see low volume and it went up, you know, 800, 900%. And then it gave all of it back. I mean, literally, it, it's back where it started. If you go to the four hour, you can see, you know, it's totally back where it started. Um, you know, went up to 90 bucks. Now it's back pretty much at like $9. Yeah, there, there could be a bit of a bottom bounce here. Maybe it's going to run back to VWAP. That, that's a 40% move. There's, a, there's volume in it now, so it's actually kind of interesting. I mean, this could definitely be a bottom bounce, but um, I think it's, you know, it's a bit of like a hope strategy. There's no real setup besides maybe just this big support zone and then hopefully bouncing off of it. I don't know. It could be, could be definitely a good 10, 20, 30% win. Who knows? But um, it's usually not how I'm day trading. So yeah, so far, so calm. I hope you guys liked the uh, monthly recap video. It was fun doing some Q and A's at the end, kind of connecting with you guys. It was a really, really chill stream. We had a nice beer. So that was, that was really enjoyable. 
had to learn some good lessons. So this month, I want to see if we can really get that um, risk reward uh, into the positive. Last last month it was negative, which is not really that good. The more I think about BPTH. Yeah, there's a little volume spike in there. Looks like we day traded this one not too long ago. In February. There's definitely going to be back holders on this ticker. Phase two results. Positive phase two. Oh, five patients. That's good news. Long term, it's a rough one. Big resistance at 10, and then maybe it's going to run to 12, 11, uh, 75, 11, 75. So 10 is the next area, and then 11, 75. I don't know. It's it's tough. Like I think we have better tickers. I usually try to focus on the best and then kind of forget the rest, but... Uh, you know, there's there's opportunity here for sure. Oh my god. <laughs> Roshan says recently watched a video where you accidentally clicked buy instead of sell and you lost almost all of your profits. Yeah, I think I I remember which day you were talking about. It was a total disaster. I was down like eight hundred bucks in like a second. I wanted to cut my losses. I think that's what it was. I wanted to cut my losses on a move on a bounce, on a dead cat bounce, and instead of closing, I bought. So I pretty much doubled down at technically the worst spot, and then it flushed. So a small loss turned into a very big loss very quickly. So I had the right idea, but the wrong execution. Um, Tigran, uh, back holders are basically people that, you know, arguably are not day traders, but you know, they're reading news on a company, they're maybe in a uh, in a uh, stock, I don't know, pump and dump group or something like that, and they actually think that this is a good investment, BPTH, and they buy in these areas, believing, you know, it's a, it's a good company, um, and then they, you know, hold it, and every day it goes down, 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 um, and that's what's called holding the bag. You know, you just have a bag of shares, and the shares become worthless, so you're just holding a bag, and you're called a bag holder happens to everyone. I've been a bag holder many times when I first started. Um, basically people that don't cut their losses. Um, so now what happens is this company is coming back to $10. So what are all the, what, what do all the bag holders think? They're like, oh my God, you know, finally, um, this company is getting close to breaking even. Let me just close out my position. So when a bunch of bag holders are trying to close their positions, there's going to be huge resistance here at roughly 10 and 11.5. So that's, that's the problem. Sean said, "That was insane. I felt your pain through the video. Yeah, it was. It was a, a bit painful. It's definitely one of those moments where just like, oh, a little stressful. Look at CEMI. Yesterday, this ticker was so far down. So now it's really stuck at this big resistance area." Sorry I'm yawning so much, guys. It's a bit of a Monday here. I don't know. I haven't really fully woken up, I suppose. I was really awake all morning, and now it's just like, since uh, I'm six hours ahead from Eastern Standard Time, I'm just, you know, sometimes I get that, like, afternoon tiredness. That, like, right after lunch kind of tiredness. That's pretty much when this stream starts. It's not fair. I'm actually looking forward to doing some trading again in the States, just like, you know, being in the same time zone. Which sounds really nice. I remember when we were in Florida, we would just, you know, wake up, document the trades, make a coffee, you know, sit down, and then like, you know, 6.30, you know, getting all ready to go with the watch list. That was good. 
Let's quickly go through some pending news here. <clears throat> this NASA rover, um, if you guys are not following it, is always really interesting what it's up to. They're always, they've got so many little devices coming out of this rover. <clears throat> Johnson Johnson vaccine, you know, they're going all out. Did you guys hear about the, um, wow, this looks super shady. What is this? Royal mummies paraded through downtown Cairo and museum move. Hmm. Did you guys see the, um, I just totally lost my train of thought. Ah, yeah, Florida, Florida comes out with a environmental disaster. Um, having huge um, spillage going on. We could maybe look into that in a little bit. Uh, let me go through here a little bit further. Wall Street Journal. J and J. Um, Johnson Johnson again making headlines for overseeing more production. It's good to see that. Um, oh, have you guys checked this article out here? This is uh, one of the articles I was talking about before. Individual investors retreat from markets after um, show stopping start to 2021. Basically, the, since the GME saga, there's been a massive decline in um, retail trading um, in terms of actual shares and then hits on websites, also just research. So people, you know, Googling, um, I don't know, certain stocks, certain brokers, that's kind of hitting a bottom right now. Um, who knows how much lower it's going to go. But um, as a, on a contrary, there's I was I read this whole article here and um, flights, for example, are getting hitting all time highs for the year. So people looking up flights and stuff like that. So there's definitely a big shift right now um, from people maybe going offline a little bit more, maybe thinking about traveling, maybe thinking about doing other things as lockdowns or you know, going down, at least in America, while lockdowns in Europe are quite the opposite at the moment. <clears throat> here's, a, here's another um, one I wanted to highlight. As more people get vaccinated, they'll have other things to do besides sit at home and buy an NFT, non-fungible token, or trade on Robinhood. Google Trends shows that searches for flights are spiking while searches for stock trading are bottoming out. This is a big thing. Um, how to lose a fortune in 10 days. I mean, we guys, we have all been following the um, Archigos capital management um, all last week, but um, this is crazy. He grew his own business 900% over seven years um, using uh, swaps. He made $10 billion. And then in 10 days, he blew up on um, Viacom and um, Discovery and lost $8 billion in 10 days. That's insane. Here's also a stat I found quite interesting um, <clears throat> from Morning Brew. Real estate consultant John Burns explains to the Wall Street Journal that institutional investors like pension funds are swooping in to buy single family homes in the US. I actually saw this on Wall Street Journal as well. I think it was Wall Street Journal driving up prices and potentially creating another housing bubble in the US. That's, you know, not the greatest. About 20% of buyers of new homes never move in. That's insane. There's a good chance if you're getting a new neighbor, it's a pension fund and it's going to be a vacant house, which I think is pretty bad because vacant houses destroy neighborhoods. Did you guys hear about the hacker news on Facebook? A hacker posted the personal information of 533 million people on Facebook, um, users online on some hacking website. Facebook said it was old data from the vulnerability it patched in 2019, but you know, still it is what it is. <laughs> the new electric Hummer SUV, it actually looks pretty cool. I've never been too big of a fan of the Hummer, but I gotta say that the E Hummer looks, looks kind of legit. India having highest cases uh, in, a, in a 
in ever. India at all time high cases is insane. Worldwide, we're definitely on a on a little bit of a huge, huge, hopefully dead cat bounce, but it's definitely a bit of a wave here. The MC, no, don't don't worry. Day trading is never never over. There's there's lulls like in the summer. It usually gets a little bit lighter. There's always something. There's always something. I wouldn't I wouldn't be worried. This is this, you know. I mean, just look at Tim Sykes. He's been day trading now for twenty years. It's uh, it's definitely not going anywhere. There's always something. Sometimes the the markets shift a little bit. Sometimes you know the the catalyst shift, the industry shifts. I used to trade OTCs. Now I don't trade OTCs anymore. So there's always something. Uh, Heath Ledger, man. I miss this guy. That was such a good movie, The Dark Knight. Um, and then... Uh, what was that one movie? A Knight's Tale? Yeah, this movie. If you guys never seen this movie, I highly recommend watching it. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. It's a really good movie. <clears throat> Publix is under um, some scrutiny. Actually, more like Ron DeSantis is under scrutiny for potentially accepting bribes from local grocery stores and other places to have the vaccines. Charlie Christ was calling out Governor um, Ron DeSantis quite a lot on, after a 60 minute interview. I feel like a lot happened over the weekend. <laughs> Yeah, our lock for sure. I mean, like he like out of all day traders, Tim Sykes really doesn't make that much money. Um, but he doesn't day trade that much, you know, he'll just he pretty much day trades just enough to, you know, poop out some videos and, and sell his DVDs. But um, he's been doing it for a long time. That's how he made his original money. So I, I'm just kind of referring to, you know, it's 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 been around for for a long time, pretty much since since brokers you know, gave uh, retail trading platforms. And then you could argue even way before that, you know, people trading at the bottom wood tree, button wood tree on, um, on Broad Street and Wall Street in New York City. And then even before then, people, you know, trading um, at the canals and, and the, the first exchange in the world in Amsterdam, you know, for the tulip mania bubble. And so it's, you know, it's, it, there's always going to be something. Sometimes there's lighter periods, sometimes there's more. All right, well, let's let's get back here. Um, got another seven minutes before the market opens. You know, my thoughts are still kind of the same. Pretty mellow out there. Yeah, Jacob. Ah, man, I cannot wait till till that's a thing of the past as well. And then OX and like that, just big sell off there. Let's go back. If we have another sell off here, that's about a 5% till next major support. It could be an interesting zone to maybe look for a red to green move. We got, you know, six more minutes before the market opens. Well, yeah, he was crushing it back then. On pure accident, too. Martin, he was talking about it. He's just like, man, I noticed that, you know, there's tickers that. If they had dot com in it, you just buy it. When they go up two hundred percent, you sell it. Heck yeah, you know that's what it's all about. You know, just trying to find the pattern that of whatever time period you're in. There's always something. Yeah, SPY is up 0.7 right now. All time highs in the SPX. 
ridiculously crazy. Oh, and the NASDAQ rally. You know, we called out this bull flag here. I should have I should have really held Playboy because you know these companies are so affected by the overall market and um, the fact that Playboy was in the upwards trend and the Nasdaq was getting ready for a breakout should have really made me consider holding it. The problem was there was huge resistance here and there was no volume. It was literally after I sold the volume came in. I was and you guys remember like you know Hillian. We've been seeing these kind of plays for a while now, and with Hillian, you know, we, you know, we had a nice entry here, and we constantly got rejected on the upside, and then we finally broke it, but with no volume, I wasn't looking to hold, so I closed. So on this example, it was the right idea, but with Playboy, um, unfortunately, it wasn't. So yeah, it is what it is. I can't complain. I made 96 uh, percent on Playboy. I mean, it was a small trade. But it was, you know, it was still like the position was small. I made, you know, thirteen hundred dollars on it. Um, so here, yeah, you can see it here. I pretty much literally sold like right there. Um, I still made ninety six point five roughly uh, percent return, and you know, my position size was pretty small. So, um, but yes, yeah, so we we could have honestly walked away with like another seven eight hundred dollars if I literally held one or two hours. Which is a little bit painful because, you know, we held this this company for two months and then like those last, you know, one, two hours would have made all the difference. Well, not all the difference, but, you know, a pretty big difference. Oh, there's so many stocks that haunt me. It's fine. I think KCAC uh, merger to QS is, is probably my biggest mess up, though. Thanks, Gab. Appreciate it. Got another two and a half minutes here before the market opens. I'm going to quickly fill up my tea. And then probably have to run to the restroom at some point. I'm drinking tea. It's like, it's my job. All right, guys. So, so we got another minute and 10 seconds here for the market opens. Common collected. I'm probably not going to jump anything too fast. I don't know. Maybe CMI if we get that, you know, a little bit of a drop here. Same with NNOX. Also, you know, dip buying potential. Bigger support, maybe even at 60 worth looking at. Oh, man, the water cooker is probably going to be going off at a really bad time. Hopefully it doesn't get too loud here. Yeah, uh, Mikey, you, you and I both, man. Jacob says, you never go broke taking profits. Amen, man. Like, in the end of the day, like, who am I to complain about making 96%, you know? Yeah, I could have made 120% or 110%. Whatever. Small size to start. Ideally, I want to have an average size over 10K. We'll see how it goes. Good luck, everyone. Time of force day, let's go.
and then OX pulling back. I might consider buying this one. Great catalyst. 34 million float. Ooh, wow. And then OX already had the bounce I was kind of hoping for. I got to open on my second screen. Oh, yeah, PL open. Thanks for reminding me. I keep forgetting about that. <laughs> Thanks, 007. NOX. Got my dip on it that I was hoping for. Taking profits there quickly. Looking for a second entry on this one. Took profits probably too soon. Let's see what's going on here. Got to be quick on these tickers when they're selling off. This is dip trading. Eight, eight. Big old red five minute candles in a row. ZKIN, this is a potential grab. Nice. Closed a little bit sooner than I was actually thinking my order book didn't refresh. Darn you TOS, why is it not refreshing so like fast? Oh well. Let me go back to CEMI. Bit of a red to green move on this one as well. Oh, thanks. And Jared says Tesla has record deliveries. Nice. Nice. CEMI with a red to green. And then OX still selling off here. The dollar volume on. Uh, and then OX is pretty mind blowing at the moment. I like the way CEMI is moving. 17 million float. How come I keep missing all my entries on this one? Well, I actually haven't tried to trade it yet uh, since um, pre market, but I was constantly letting the moves slip through my fingers on it. Ooh, and then OX just had a big second sell-off. Down below $60, hit, hit a low of 59 30 or 20 mm, Yeah, Jared, buying Tesla under 600 sounds real nice. Still watching NNOX, um, but I think CEMI might be the move right now. We got upside till about six, 586. There's definitely some big resistance there. Fifty-eight eighty-four looks to be the the current low. Long, small size. On NNOX, very small size. Was looking for a second fill. Second fill. That's 58.7. Right now we're at 58.9. Down around 9% from the open. Definitely need to watch out for sure.
dipping lower again. Small, no, missed that fill. Volume selling off a little bit here, giving me some confidence. Average at 58.7. Looking for that move back to the upside. On a ticker, you know, at this price, you're looking for over a dollar a share. I don't know what's going on to that apartment to the right of me, but it's getting pretty loud. Took some profits there. Trying to take some, took some more profits there. I'm out of this one, NNOX, very small, smooth sailor. Under a dollar a share profit though, these are small moves. And we're talking like, you know, percent at best. You guys know I don't trade backside very aggressive in terms of I'm not looking for a home run. Wow, my laptop got real dusty this weekend. I have no idea why. What the heck be a uh, nonsense ticker? I've got a lot of nonsense here on the order on the watch list. NNOX is down over 10% now from the open. That's pretty nasty. CEMI is looking much nicer if you guys are into trading pullbacks and with continue, uh, potential continuation. I'm watching NNOX for a possible move under 57. I don't know if it will, but if it does, uh, it, could be, it could be a small size play. I like to use smaller size when I'm not super optimistic. I think smaller size is better than sometimes not trading because not trading sometimes results in FOMO, which results in you know future um, moves that you know you probably shouldn't be doing because you're trying to make make up for missed opportunity in the past. Removing order on NNOX, I'm going to let it ride. Watching CEMI here, that's quite the flush this ticker had, huh? like that not my favorite trading conditions this morning but uh, hey but since last week I'm kind of ready for anything heck thanks remotely appreciate that I'm not really sure what we're up right now but here's a little sneak preview to anyone watching this or me watching on playback I'm not gonna look I'm looking at my second screen and there we go Going back to CEMI, let's see here, 52. There's a double bottom potential here. I wouldn't be surprised if it broke it, but I don't know, we'll see. Oh, and then OX selling off again. This could be a possible entry on this one, this 50, 56s, I don't know. It's in 56 territory, almost. gotta be so careful trading the backside you know you're looking for that you know one percent sometimes upside and then you're risking five percent downside it's not it's not the strategy i would really recommend for a lot of people i i kind of like doing it i've been doing it for a really long time um it was my bread and butter for years um but you know sometimes you really do get stuck in a, a nasty setup and then ox now down about 10.4% from the open. That's pretty bad. 57 is showing a lot of support. Maybe there's going to be maybe there's going to be a move. Oh. Mike, I appreciate the 5 bucks. Mike drop. There we go. Appreciate that. Heck yeah. Watching NNOX. I'm 
hold on let me go back to nnox here possible break into the 40s watching 56 40 can we get a 56 40 can we get it can we get it come on we no oh i thought we were gonna get it there was the two percent pop i was i was you know that was what i wanted right there and it did it um i, I was thinking we we're gonna get a third red candle i was gonna accumulate there in that third red candle Mm. Like I'm gonna invest those five bucks right into some some German half liters. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I just got myself excited. And in OX, you know this this ticker could flush here. I'm removing my limit orders for now. If it does flush, I would consider buying this one low 56s. I don't know. There's there's gonna be probably some decent support in this area. Remember, we're still on the back side. Possible entry. Long. Full size. At Would consider going even longer. Long at 78. Watching. I usually don't like buying the first red flush candle. It's usually not something I recommend. Wouldn't be surprised if I was red for a bit on this one. Smaller size accumulated there at 59. Brought down my average a little bit. You, I, would, I would expect this candle to possibly go below 59, 55, 59. Usually I like buying on the second red candle after a flush. Check out the five minute chart. The char five minute chart is devastating on this stock. We're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten big old biggies in a row. Nasty. See how I'm not watching CEMI right now? I gotta be focused on one thing at a time. Congrats anyone that's nailing it. There was a nice double bottom. I don't know what's happened since then. I just, you know, oftentimes when I start switching between tickers, I, I trip over myself pretty hard. Fifty-five, sixty, just went long. Fifteen hundred share, fifteen thousand dollars roughly. Average at sixty-eight, down thirty cents a share, down forty cents a share, roughly fifty cents a share. About one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh wait, you guys can see the PNL. I forgot you guys can see that. Long at 68, 55, 68, dip buying this one. Often fives are a pivot zone, often 14% from pre-market from the open is a pivot zone. That's kind of what I'm betting on here. Move to 56 would be nice. There's definitely some resistance going on here. Getting it. Boom, out, taking profits there. That was a nice win. Where do we close? Filled, we closed at 66. Went up to, what is that, 57? Yeah, okay. Not bad. Remember, we're not looking for the we're not looking for perfect entries, perfect exits. We're looking for a chunk. Some traders say, including myself, meat of the move. I don't know who started that. Probably Tim. I feel like Tim Sykes said that a lot. I've been watching him since I was like nineteen. <clears throat> I'm twenty-eight now. 
Am I? <sighs> There's you know, so much trading terminology. It just kind of gets all mixed up at one point. And an OX, look at that move, over 57. So coulda, shoulda, woulda held this one a little bit longer. 1.5 now, hmm. Well, 1.5% I left on the table, but on a backside move, you gotta be careful. Look at this five minute setup here on NNOX. We have really, really nice hammer candle. Possible break back above the hammer candle, that would be a 58. And then from there, we might see some more resistance around 59. So really promising stuff we're seeing here on this one. For some reason, my trades aren't appearing on the chart. You see I have show trades selected, but nothing's happening. It means TOS is congested right now. Usually when the markets are up or down about a percent, TOS is not that responsive. So it looks like we're getting some of that. We're, that's what we're feeling right now. So I don't know if you guys are feeling the same thing, if you're feeling the congestedness on TOS, but that's, that's why my trades aren't showing on the chart. Don't forget to drop a like, guys, if you enjoy the content. I really do appreciate that. And let's uh, let's get back here on this Monday. It's kind of a kind of an interesting Monday so far. ACY holds it from Sneep Sneep. It's a fun fun name. Ferocious ACY is insane. Shares is 1.5 million, so no wonder this ticker is getting halted here. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of turnover to move this company. Uh oh, we got a text spammer here. And NOX might be crawling back to the upside. CEMI, shaky, shaky stuff. It actually did exactly what I was kind of thinking it might. It was gonna break double bottom just a slightly. Sometimes I trade that move, but I didn't this time. I was too focused on NNOX, which that last trade, I took profits a little bit too soon, left 2% on the table. I was thinking we were gonna see a move over the nine EMA, but I knew that if it didn't and it did a shake out right here, I would have got shaken out. So. I would rather take my 1.5% than, you know, taking a loss on a shakeout. I just know that that's me personally. Everyone's going to be different. Everyone's going to have a different answer and everyone's going to have something that works different for them and better for them. AWX halted. A lot of tickers being called out. Oh light volume and then gets halted right away. Yeah, 3.9 million shares outstanding. That's what happens. Yeah, Palantir was called out, PLTR, good call out, guys. Um, this was a perfect move. Had a nice double bottom here. 1.7% pops to the upside, a little bit of a pullback, another 2% move. I usually don't trade Pal um, PLTR, Palantir. But, you know, good setup for sure. Light movement, though. I'm not, not a big fan when a ticker, you know, has this perfect move and it's only a 37 almost 4%, you know, it's kind of like, ugh. You're gonna have to trade with big size if you wanna, you know, make some money off of that. Um, I'm not sure, I have heard, Rayo, that um, TOS is available over there, but I have yet to have, you know, my own experience with that. We got a lot of FAQs in the video description below, but this is TD Ameritrade um, Thinkorswim platform, which is a massive love-hate relationship. You know, I've been using it the longest for, I don't know, for a really long time. Um, I don't know, eight, eight years or so, but um, 
I feel like it's it's consistently getting worse. Uh, it's consistently getting more congested because a lot of people are jumping on it, and that's that's the problems. NAOV being called out. It's actually quite nice. I was looking at this company earlier today. It's on my watch list, actually. Let's quickly ring it up here. Uh, US medical device company, 50 million float, 25 million market cap. Looks like it's missing a catalyst, NAOV. Yeah, it's missing a catalyst, kind of weird. Possible quick quickie though here at 35 maybe we'll get a move under 35 looking for that break of 1.4 huge resistance here in this zone there's not a lot trading today so sometimes you can get a little bit more aggressive on a ticker that Usually you'd want to be maybe cautious on three, four. It's holding here though. Three, four needs to crack. Sell volume. Yeah, still there. I was looking for that move maybe to one four, but I wasn't gonna get too much more aggressive on this one. So I basically just said, not for me. Removing limit order on it. CEMI going down. 9.52, maybe we'll get some 10 o'clock reversals. I'm gonna quickly run to the restroom and get this T break coming up here. The T is knocking. Oh yeah, this is a perfect time to show my disclaimer. <laughs> if, that, if it makes a difference, I don't know, that's the question. Yo, 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 9.54, got to put my glove back on. Hey, uh, uh, Akshath, uh, Akshath, I don't know if I'm saying your name right. I'll just say the last one, Rayo. Uh, check out the video, the monthly recap video that we did on Thursday for March, March recap. You'll learn all about what we do here. And if anyone else is curious about... Um, what we do here and exactly you know what we're what we're up to check out the foundation video series you'll get through it in one to two hours probably much less it's totally free to check out and you'll have a good understanding of what we do and then uh, again I definitely definitely recommend if you guys are new here check out this one um, best day trading month um, but dot 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 
my March recap um, video. This, this is the one where we dive into all of our stats a lot more. Um, but on average, I'm trading about $10,000 per, per position size. And I usually do between five and 20 trades a day, somewhere, somewhere in that area. Man, CEMI I had some nasty flushes. Every time I see tickers that move like this pre-market, I'm always just so weary of them. Like tickers that, you know, yeah, they're they're they had that first leg and they're consolidating, but the consolidation is nasty. You know, it's just like this really irregular flushes. Um, they're just they never really breed confidence for me. Now we're having this kind of you know big flush here. We're having another flush here. Let's see if we can get this to around five dollars, maybe even break five dollars. And then see if maybe we want to do a little bit of an accumulation here on CEMI. I'm just not super stoked on this ticker. I'm surprised it hasn't got halted to the downside in a weird way, but let's uh, let's see what happens. NNOX looks like it found a base here around 56. But I can't say I'm super excited to trade it. ACY opened up from that hold uh, and uh, sold right back down. Could be a good accumulation though. Maybe it's gonna find support and keep running. I don't know. Uh, and then OX, yeah, so 55. This is the zone we were talking about. And whew, had a full 5% bounce. I only walked away with like 1.5% of that. Either way, you know, 55, I love the, the $5 zone. I love, um, you know, $5, I like 50 cents. Um, I like 550 and 450 a lot. They're just, you know, there's something about the five that's a bit pivotable. It's it pivot pivotable. It's kind of like the 10, right? Everyone's like, you know, is it gonna go over $10 or below $10? It's the same with the five. Five I've always noticed was, you know, bounce territory. That's why I was getting more aggressive with this last move here. PFMT. Hmm, tough, tough. This one broke out from an ascending um, wedge. It's kind of an unusual pattern. I don't know. I don't really know what to say about this one. I don't really like the flush. ACY was halted at 53, so it should open again up in 15 seconds or, yeah, 15 seconds. ACY, let's see what happens. About $10,000 per trade. Five to 20 trades per day. ACY. ACY did not open up, so most like it's gonna be a 10 minute halt. Let's quickly go here to the halts on NASDAQ. Volatility pause. Did I have grow my swing account? Uh, I have GRWG growth generation. Uh, grow? No, I don't recall. Did I have it? No, I don't think so. No, 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 it doesn't ring a bell. Oh, I actually forgot about this one. We went long as well as SPFR. I was looking at it. I was like, yes, yes, yes. So the ticker we swing traded it, I mean, we day traded. We have a small position as well in our IRA account. 
Um, like I said, I really am quite bullish with the whole space thing, uh, with the space ETF coming up and looking for space tickers. Uh, unfortunately, this one is down a little bit, uh, you know, a smaller size. Well, not the smallest size, but I would, I would think about averaging down a little bit. I actually had a limit order today, this pre-market at like 1050. Uh, and then literally like yesterday or sometime over the weekend, I put it in and then it goes up 14%. Unfortunately, it didn't hold the highs. I thought I got a great entry pre-market, but now it's still down. So looking to hold down for a little bit. We can talk more about swings later. It's still day trading time. Yeah, I'm still waiting for a crash here or a crack on $5. And then OX, guys, possible dip at 55. Here it is. Boom. Afternoon, sun was coming in hot. No, Mike, a CEMI bag holder. That's not what we want to hear. Mike, you're better than that. <laughs> oh, yeah, XELB. Good call out, Jay. Nice, 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 nice. Acquired logo by Lori Goldstein. Terms not disclosed. Merger news. Three dollars is bigger resistance. Nice, good energy. Nineteen million shares outstanding. I'm waiting for CEMI to still dip lower, but I don't know if it will. Woo wee! Great move there. Good, good action as well. Twenty six is a spot to watch. I'm watching NNOX on a, my other screen. It looks like there could be some good potential coming up here. All right, Steven, that sounds pretty good. Happy to hear that. Did anyone else get totally April Fools by Meet Kevin? I watched Meet Meets Kevin, Meet Kevin's uh, um, getting hired by CNBC, replacing Jim Cramer video. I'm not gonna lie, I like, until the end, I was like, what? Oh, they got me good. Yeah, BPTH has some potential for sure. I'd be careful right now. It's getting towards big resistance. Could flush again. 
I keep watching SCLB. <laughs> yeah, Colby, okay. I, th I was like, man, did I get fooled that that easily? I also didn't watch it on, on April Fool's Day. I watched it on this morning. So like, I, I, April Fool's is totally not in my mind anymore. I'll have to re keep that in mind, Jared, just in case we ever reach that. I'll be like, don't even think about it. But uh, I, yeah, I know what you mean. A lot of his, his uh, market open and, and market videos are a little bit you know stressful to watch sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I, I get it as well. Wow, XELB, man, just freaking once it broke three, it just went crazy. Jared. <laughs> well, the, fir the first step is acknowledgement, acknowledgement, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Man, I was I'm really excited to jump on XELB or NNOX again, but uh... oh, both moves. I, I don't think I could do that, Alfie. I don't think I can hide the, the subscribe button or anything like that. That's an interesting point, though. Here we go. XELB. Let's watch it. BTU being called out. Yeah, if man, right now, if I wanted to keep trading, I'd really have it. I would have to be pushing um, some of my uh, my default, you know, modes a little bit more. I'm a little bit too cautious at the moment, so I would have to be jumping on, you know, more aggressive kind of moves like the XELB, which you know freaking would have worked. I mean, that was a that was a 15% breakout. Freaking nice. Ten oh eight. Nice Ben. Are you gonna try to double or nothing? What's what's the plan? No, I'm just kidding. Trade trade good setups and that's it, man. If you know, if you're up or down seven cents, it you know, it doesn't matter. It, what matters is if you're if you're doing good trading. That's the only thing important. PL is the secondary. Fair enough. XELB, anyone try to trade that pullback to the 9 EMA? It was actually looking kind of okay. I was thinking about it myself. You could really tell that the market was just lacking like something good today because XELB comes up out of nowhere with merger news and this is you know instantly the leak gapper here with only $40 million volume. It really just shows that, you know, the market was dry and it was looking for something.
Rayo, watch the foundation video series, man, definitely. And then build your own scanner. That's where you want to start. Move here, 3.8. Let's see if we could break a little bit lower. Nope. Buyers coming in. Looking for an entry. Ah, I missed it. I, f I feel it in my soul. I missed this one. I would have had to get aggressive near three, I think. I'd probably already be taking profits here, actually. Oh, yeah, you see why I broke that 16? Let's see if it breaks it one more time. Could get halted again. Ooh, ACY is actually kind of interesting to watch. Fabrizio, why are you writing that? This is the second time you're writing the same message. Yeah, XELB, that was perfect. Ah, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Didn't get aggressive enough, that's fine. I'd be closing out. I wouldn't be looking for a home run trade. Too much resistance above. Possible flush even, I don't know. I don't know. Probably, probably a uh, cautious bull. I feel like to be a bear, you're you got to be like all sorts of shorting and I don't know. I would consider myself a cautious bull, but yeah, I don't know. Is there a difference between a cautious bull and a bear? I have no idea. <laughs> Alfie, heck yeah, man. Oh, I could go for some poor quality pizza right now. I love pizza. I go out to pizza as much as possible. My girlfriend hates it. She doesn't eat pizza really. And then like, it's just this constant tug of war, war of, you know, am I gonna get my pizza fill? Luckily here in Albania, all the restaurants kind of offer the same food. It's really weird. Like you can go to like a nice fish restaurant or you go to like the beer house and the menu is identical. I mean, it's the weirdest thing uh, here in Sarande. So I've just been ordering pizza every time there's a there's a uh, brick oven or clay oven or whatever you call it. It's been, it's been quite magical. Nice move here, XELB. Boom, seven percent. All right, all right, XELB in the house. Who's trading this one? Man, for anyone tuning in right now, you're probably like, Alex, why aren't you trading any of this? Well, you know what? I was milking NNOX and I'm pretty content right now. So uh, not to mention XELB, you know, isn't really fitting my playhouse, but at the same time, you know, this is, this is the hot ticker with the action right now. So big congrats to anyone milking this one. No one AP Pro. We're stranded. We're stranded in Albania. It's. It, I don't even honestly want to comment on it too much. It's, it's been kind of uh, exhausting. Congrats for gravity on their side. <laughs> yeah, Alfie. Seriously. All right, all right, Mike is long, 500. Yeah. I'd be looking for a move over 3.6, but I don't think I would hold it. Yeah, I would have closed. I would have closed right there. I the first person to close over 3.6, that, that would have been me. Nice, 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 nice. Five, ten, fourteen here. Yeah, I mean, Ben, there's definitely worse places to be stranded. It's more just like the psychological, like, kind of um, annoyance behind the whole thing. It's not it's not the place. It's just, um, yeah, it is what it is. XELB, 
possible move again over 364. I would be looking for maybe a quick pullback here to 344. I've yet to trade this ticker, but it's looking okay. Risking about 2.5% downside for a possible break and a continuation. Next big resistance zone, I'd maybe argue is $4. And then from there, we might have to see a run to 475. I don't know if we're going to see something like that, but we're getting a lot of big volume here today. So that's really, really nice. This acquisition news is much better than I would have anticipated. Heck yeah, Ramoli. I love it. Good vibes always. Nice. There's the break. Sweet. Sweet. Nice move, Micah. I still want to call you Mika for some reason. Yeah, I'm watching NNOX. I like it's back above 55. Uh, I was kind of hoping it would go into the 52s. It's up six percent. I don't know if I'm going to trade it in this area, but maybe we're going to have a move back to VWAP or so. That'd be about six percent upside from here. So NNOX, you know, could be back in the play playbook. Ah. Thanks, Murph. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> oh, dang. Wait, Sync, I don't know if it works like that, man. And Heiko, I, I understand the dilemma, man. That's, that's a big dilemma. I, I wouldn't really know what to do in that situation. You'd have to get 100 people to quickly hit like again, so at least you get to 69 again. All right, XELB. I'm turning into a, a dangerous little FOMO chicken here, so I'm not sure if I'm going to trade it at all. But, uh, you know, if there's the right setup, I probably will. Like I was saying before, $4 is the next bigger resistance zone. And then from there, maybe even $4.75. i am not sure, but uh, that's what I would be looking for. I was still watching NNOX on my second screen, but I have yet to jump on it again. Um, this is the ticker I'm up the most today. Um, dip trading this one the whole entire way down. Had to be very careful here. I understood we were on the backside and I understood that I was not looking for any home runs and I was trading my 1% profits the whole way down. Um, and then this one here, I actually didn't hold that long, but this was the biggest mover here, 5%. Um, but I knew I was gonna get shaken out because I would have had it get stopped out. So that's why I wasn't holding this bounce very long. Um, although the bounce here at $55, um, is a bit of a more a significant psychological zone. Plus, I've noticed around 14% is sometimes a place where a lot of tickers sell off to. Um, just kind of things I've noticed over the time. So um, I felt fairly confident with this one, so I did hold it a little bit longer, but you know I could have held it um, much, much longer. Um, XELB, definitely the winner right now. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a light market here in the small cap space, so that's why a ticker like XELB with uh, acquisition news with you know no terms uh, disclosed is, is hitting so hard because traders are just looking for something to trade. Overall, the NASDAQ and other indexes are up quite a bit, so that means um, you know mid caps are taking center stage today as opposed to the small, uh, small caps. So that's probably where there's a bit more trading today. Um, that was actually a big reason as well, SPFR, why I was trading this one. Um, 
I did a small day trade on this one, was up 20 bucks, and then I closed it because uh, momentum was just not coming in at all. And pre-market, it was just you know very red, so I ended up closing that one. Um, but oh wow, I just realized I'm up a thousand bucks. I did not notice that. I thought it was up five hundred dollars or so. Hiding the P and L, man. I really like doing that. Uh, sweet. Okay, I I'll probably call it here. Honestly, I, I feel like XELB, I've been getting more and more tempted to trade. And I feel like that when I do trade it, I'm just gonna get stuck in a bad situation. I would probably consider a slight break of 3.5. That could be a good move into the three fours and then look for a move back to the upside. I think that would be a, a play that um, I'm quite familiar with. So let's see what happens here at 3.6. <laughs> Ike is on the 69 patrol. Thanks, Red Approves. Appreciate it, man. Boom. Yeah, okay. There's the bounce happening a little sooner than I expected, but I don't know. Let's quickly go to the uh, the IRA here. Um, slightly up. Unfortunately, my new trade SPFR, we're down slightly on this one. And... Uh, Let's quickly look at PLBY to give me some internal FOMO and despair. Yeah, it hit a new high here of 27. You guys won't believe it. I literally sold this stock um, at $20 after holding it for three months, no, two months. Um, luckily, we had a phenomenal entry. Our entry price was at 1039, so pretty much as low as it gets here in this area. Uh, but then, you know, we sold here for about a 96% profit and then, you know, it decides to go up 150%, literally. Um, hours of trading time after we sold and I was like you got to be kidding me uh, it is what it is you know now it's at a new high I would have been taking profits here I, I would be taking profits here for sure um, that that would have that was kind of the, the move I was waiting for um, oh I'm gonna stop looking at this one's getting so painful yeah it would have been like a thousand dollar extra profit in the bank you know, it's not, you know, something that's going to change my life. But at the same time, like, it was exactly what I was waiting for. Um, so that's a little bit annoying. Um, other than that, nothing's really too new here. I have a small limit order on ZKIN. F, uh, NFT play. I was kind of hoping we get a little bit of a dump here below 686. Six. Now I'll consider buying this one again. Maybe we're going to get a dump now because this um, this breakout was in light volume and it doesn't look like it's holding its highs well. So this could be this could be that dump I was waiting for. I don't, I don't know. We'll see here. Ramoli says call it a day. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, Koma is wondering, does bad internet in Europe affect momentum trading in bad or no fills? I would probably say yes. It's really hard to have like a concrete answer on that, I feel like. Um, but, you know, when I was in Berlin, I mean, we had horrible internet for a long time. And I had the best internet you can buy in Berlin. It's not like I picked the cheapest plan. Uh, and then I downgraded from um, glass fiber to DSL. Uh, where the speeds were slower, but they were guaranteed, um, like north of seven and like between 14 or something. So I have that as my backup and that one's been working pretty good. The problem is like, yeah, I don't know. I, d I do feel like maybe sometimes my ping is a little high and maybe like there's there's other issues. It's it's hard to say. Like when I lived, lived in New York City and I, I literally lived on Wall Street, I felt I, I was cheeky as heck because I was like, man, I feel like I'm getting that first data stream from the from the exchanges. Um, did it make a difference at all? I, I don't know. Um, maybe it's a psychological difference, but I was I was already pretty nervous for Greece because in Greece uh, they are they're notorious for bad internet. Every time I've gone to Greece, I've had a horrible experience when it comes to internet, and the the place we were gonna go to. Um, was already rebuilding their internet because I was like, there's no way we're gonna go there with your current internet setup. So they're like hooking up a satellite system. Uh, <laughs> this was ridiculous. And uh, unfortunately we didn't make it there uh, in the end after all that struggle. But um, I was a little bit nervous because the satellite system was pointing to another satellite or not a sat, no, the, the satellite was pointing to a, what the heck's it called? Um, it was pointing to, uh, 
I don't know, some something in the mountain, uh, which was pointing back to Corfu, the city, which was then where the main hub was, um, which was then pointing to Italy, um, I think Milan, and then pointing somewhere in the U.S. So I felt like, you know, my order is getting routed in all these different places. So I'm like, you know, does it does it, you know, make a difference? I'm sure it makes some nanoseconds of a difference, but I feel like psychologically, um, it makes the biggest difference. So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm using TD Ameritrade where, you know, we're getting routed to like Citadel and other um, clearing houses. So ultimately, my, all my orders are being batched anyway. I think if I was using a direct broker like Lightspeed or something, there, there, the, the, there would probably be a bigger difference. But I, I think with TD Ameritrade, I would have to switch brokers first. I think that would be the, the biggest change. And then, you know, making sure you have um, the best connection is is the most important part no matter what though i travel with uh i think it's 15 meters of ethernet cable no matter where i go in the world it's hilarious uh because every time a hotel tells me like oh there's no router in your room i'm like that's no problem and i'll freaking have my ethernet cable going out the window or wherever it, wherever it needs to go um I would not trade on Wi-Fi. I would always trade with Ethernet. Wi-Fi is not stable. The problem with Starlink is it's not everywhere. The Starlink is um, only in specific areas. Um, maybe in like a year from now, when Starlink is more accessible, I would I would definitely trust me. I've signed up to all the Starlink alerts. It, you know, it sounded like a great idea. But we'll, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I have checked it out. I've never really dove into it fully. I've never, you know, exercised that option. Um, this is like that orange cube thing, right? That you can bring around you wherever you go. Oh no, this one's a little different. What was I thinking about? I was thinking about something similar to this though. You pretty much have internet wherever you go. I don't know. I think that's probably one of the biggest hurdles um, about, you know, day trading and then streaming as well. Because if I was just day trading, it would be a little bit more simple. But, you know, streaming adds a little bit of complications. Built in translator trip advisor. That's probably not super necessary. The question is, what happens after one gigabyte free? Because I need unlimited. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. Looks interesting. Nice, Jason. I will um, I will look into this a little bit more. Let me let me copy the link and add it to my research folder here. News and research. Nice. Thanks, man. The Hummingbird Project. Drama thriller about high frequency trading and ultra low latency direct access market access written and directed by Kim Yugen, produced by Pierre. Yeah, it definitely looks good. I will definitely check it out. Great advice. I don't think I've seen this one yet. Heck yeah, Micah, thanks for the share. I'm going to leave this here as well into our research thing this will all be in the watch list which will be pinned in the video description below uh, or video comment below the first pinned comment below after the stream streaming will use 10 gigabytes per two hours yeah that makes sense is that really the uh the rate i need about 5 kb per second Big congrats, honestly, to anyone trading XELB. I kind of chickened out at one point on this one. Super, super nice. 
really just hammering the volume here. To, uh, we could have probably had a 2K, 3K day if I kept on trading this one, but who knows? I, I also could have made some mistakes getting shaken out, getting FOMO, getting you know mad. You know, I was hoping for that move to four, and voila, it freaking nailed it. So next next spike here could you know be to five. That's the big resistance zone as well. Woo wee! Awesome guys. I did want to do a quick little thank you here. I think we hit fifteen. We hit fifteen k subs. That is huge, guys. I want to say a big thank you to everyone. This was, um, you know, we've been just, you know, chili vanilla all the way up here to 15K. I have done like zero, you know, marketing or anything like that. Just, you know, hanging out with you guys, trading. Uh, it's It's been really good fun. I, you know, couldn't be more stoked about the community we have formed here. So I'm, I'm, I'm stoked and just thinking about it. So I do appreciate that a lot. And if you're totally new here, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Join us on our journey. We had our original small cap challenge to 25K. Now we're, you know, what, what's the next challenge? We don't even have a challenge. We're just, you know, trying to get as good as possible with day trading. Right now, my challenge is to have a positive P&L. Uh, I mean, not positive P&L, positive risk reward ratio. If you guys haven't done so, definitely check out this best day trading a month um, recap video. I go through the biggest lesson that I think I can improve um, over the since the last few months that will make the biggest um, biggest difference in my P and L, and that is um, my risk reward, which last month was negative. I had over a seventy percent success ratio, um, but I had almost a perfect break even risk reward. It was slightly negative, so that was not very good. Um, so I think that's really the biggest thing I can improve on. It's because I look like a gangster in my profile pic. Oh yeah, this 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 picture, oh my. This was quite ridiculous. This is actually my friend's hedge fund office in New York City. Uh, I was, when I was living there. <laughs> oh, this was, this was a different time in my life. This place was really cool. If you open this door, um, this office was like mahogany and then there was just a whole wall, or not a wall, but like this massive like liquor cabinet that was quite savage and then i was playing some golf my, while my friend was finishing up some stuff that was quite a random day but yeah good observation or funny observation is that how long i've had the youtube channel i guess so but uh, I'm not sure when we started producing content, like what, 20, 2019 or something like that. No, 2019 is when I switched to day trading small caps on YouTube. Um, before then I was making occasional crypto videos. I think that was like 2019, most of 2019 and maybe even 20, some of 2018, I don't know. We can quickly check it out. It's not super relevant to day trading though, so I don't want to like you know. Oh man, this could this could take forever. Wow, some of these videos feel like a lifetime ago. This is when we were doing our. Um, this is when we were doing. Oh, look how tan I was. This was in Portugal. Uh, yeah, we were doing our our day trading and then we would have our recap videos if you guys remember that it's not even loading anymore look at ACY crawling back up on here Man, honestly, guys, whoever nailed XELB today, I, I'm I'm envious. You know, you you slayed the beast. Um, I stopped trading. I should have kept trading this one, uh, but heck, you know, first 1K day of the of the month. You know, on Thursday, the first day of the month, it wasn't really um, the the best day trading here. I was up like 50 bucks. 
so I think, you know, I'll take my 1K day and just, you know, call it. Uh, but in terms of, you know, IRA uh, a little bit, I don't know. We, we reviewed the IRA for so much. Uh, there's really nothing new. I wish there was more for me to talk about. Um, I, you know, we sold, we sold Playboy. Uh, and then I took the profits from Playboy and I put a buy order on ZKIN and OCG. Uh, and then I put a little bit of money into SPFR. So, or I put the majority of the money into SPFR and then I put two buy, uh, you know, just limit entry orders here, just one share each um, to possibly play these um, uh NFTs, non-fungible token tickers a little bit if they sell off a little bit more towards bigger support. Um, so we could quickly talk about that. But, you know, there's other otherwise there's really, uh, you know, it's just not too many changes right now in this, in this portfolio. So here, if we go to the four hour, you can see my limit order was right here. Uh, I was looking for another crack getting closer to the 180 day, but it looks like it did spike up already. So that's a little bit unfortunate. We might have missed this one. Uh, similar situation with ZKIN. Um, also had a bit of a spike to the upside, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was a little bit more consolidation ahead. I, I don't really know, but um, I'm not gonna rush it with those two. For now, I'm gonna be holding, uh, where is that ticker? SPFR for a little bit here. I'm not really uh, liking the fact that it gave back so much of this gain. Uh, we got a pretty okay entry, so I'm gonna look to see if we can, um, I like the fact that it was making higher lows here all the time. Uh, just kind of crawling to the upside. I don't think it's gonna take a lot to move this company up, um, but we have a lot of resistance here, so we need to break that resistance, which we did, and that's why I got aggressive on it. I actually had a limit order for this one um, before this run-up, and I missed my entry, so that's why I chased it a little bit. Um, I, I thought at the time I got a good entry on this one, but uh, I don't know. You know, it sold off so much, finding support now, so we'll see. I'm gonna hold this one for a few days, uh, well, you know, you know, I, I have a long time horizon, but you know, for, for now I'm going to hold this one for, um, a few days and then maybe I'll adjust it and maybe we'll close it for, you know, a small loss. I don't really know. I do like the fact that the volume is fading here. I like the fact that this one's heavily affiliated with space exploration. I like the fact that there's, um, an ETF now for space companies that just launched and that's really propping up a lot of space companies. So I think, um, you know, the merger here with Velo, Velo 3D Metal, um, so this is a 3D um, printing company uh, for metal. Um, you know, it's really, really interesting. And, uh, you know, this SPAC is just a little bit questionable right now because it looks like they might have um, came out with, you know, not super clear um, information for, for the investors, for retail investors. So they are under investigation right now, which I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Let's uh, let's kind of play this one by year. I do like you know buying SPACs usually closer to ten, and then you know holding it um, for some time, uh, kind of assessing, you know how it goes, and then you know if 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 the momentum doesn't happen soon here, I'll probably be closing this one. That's for sure. I don't think I'm going to be waiting around forever on this ticker. Yeah, so the real winner today was NNOX for me. But honestly, for probably everyone else, it was, uh, where'd it go? Here it is, XELB, this was, the, this was the hot one for sure. We were dip trading this one. Any thoughts on GOEV? Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, the modular, you know, electric car, business is really hot especially for delivery canoe has some really interesting um kind of prototypes but they're just selling off so much that you know it's, it's a little bit hard to kind of figure this one out uh you know i had my one really good trade on this one once the momentum was dying here and it broke the uh, pennant pattern i closed um i did uh, my alert buy I might do another size but uh I don't know, volume is falling off here. I'm not sure if we're gonna break this area, but if it breaks 840, I might even consider um, doing a dead cat bounce kind of play on it. I, I don't know if it's dead, but that's, that's what my goal would be for now. Heck yeah, Micah, 2.2K on XELB. That's what I like to hear, man. Big congrats. 
XELB was such a nice ticker. Oh, I'm, I'm kicking myself a little bit for that one, huh? Yeah, Planet 13, yeah. I like NVVE as well. I think it's just, it's, I think they're just gonna take some time. Some of these tickers are just, you know, they're, they're looking good, but they're just like, they need to saute a little bit longer, I suppose. I mean, ACIC, I'm a little bit skeptical with this company. You know, I, I messed this one up because this ticker was always a short-term kind of play. I always wanted that break here at 18 to the 20s. It never hit 20s and then flushed all the way down. I closed this one out, but then I was kind of, you know, thinking, okay, well, that was a big sell-off. Maybe it's going to have a bounce, which it did. I didn't take my profits and now we're down, you know, on this one. So it's, uh, I was I was never looking to hold this one that long. So I, I don't know, with this Archer, um kind of uh drone um thing that I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about clove looking pretty good uh i would i would probably average down to this one if i had funds available let me see if there's anything new to say here about any of these tickers nvve uh i just missed my average down on this one i gotta say i'm kind of kicking myself on this uh i had a limit order here somewhere on this green day, I placed the limit order and then I didn't get filled. I wanted to do it ahead of time, but I didn't have funds available. It's like not having funds available, it seems to be a recurring theme for me for messing up my swing trades. So I might, you know, once I sell a few swing trades, I might really think about how I want to allocate the account to be a little bit more efficient in terms of always having funds available. The problem is it's a Roth IRA and I can't put more money into it because I'm capped at 6K a year. So it's like, you know, usually the account gets fully allocated fairly quickly. There's Playboy giving me FOMO. Um, you know, pay safe. I'm, you know, I love this one. I think it's really going to spike at one point. It could sell off below 13.5 again. You know, this is one of those companies that I'm pretty sure in the next year it's going to have a nice run at one point. It's just like, you know, it's a little bit slow. Um, Shift Technologies, another one of those that's just a little bit slow. Um, Swift Osprey Tech with their. Um, with their satellites here, uh, low orbit satellites. I, you know, I'm very bullish on this company, especially now with the with the space ETF and the fact that it pretty much had a triple bottom here at 10. Um, again, like one of those companies, I probably would be just, you know, thinking about averaging into. Um, you know, we don't even have that much size on this one, so I probably would even buy more. But, you know, again, just needs a little bit longer, most likely. SPFR is questionable for sure. Uh, SSPK, um, my uh, alert entries were executed, but again, I didn't have funds available. <sighs> THPR, um, SPAC acquisition, uh, you know, it found, looks like it found a bottom as well. I really want to see this break 11.5. I want to see a runner in this one. Uh, I'm not sure how long we'll hold it. We'll have to do another assessment on this one. VIH, I'm so bullish on the VIH. It's a bit of a Bitcoin play as well, a crypto play. Um, you know, the back cryptocurrency exchange. I, I would, I am buying this one consistently in my investment portfolio. I'm, I'm planning to hold this one um, for a bit. Um, I'm also swing trading it, so I'm definitely over allocated on VIH. Um, XL was, you know, the, the worst one and it still is, and I should probably just cut my losses on this one and, you know, say goodbye to um, some money here. But yeah, I don't know. I still have yet to cut it. It's annoying because I was gonna cut it right here, right here. I knew this was a dead cat bounce. My limit order was like, just chilling. <sighs> and then I moved up my limit order and yeah, I missed it. Uh, it is what it is, but yeah, I don't know. This is, this might just have to be, you know, a 50% loser, honestly. It's uh, not looking too hot. Um, yeah, ZK ends nothing at the moment. XXII. XXII was one of the first companies I ever day traded years ago. It's I don't think it's on my TD Ameritrade account. I think that was on E-Trade back in the day or something like that. That was like 20, 2014. I think it was somewhere in this spike here. It had a had a multi-day run. No, multi well, it's a multi-week run, yeah. Don't they do like um, reusable cigarettes or something like that? E-cigarettes or something? All cigarettes. Yeah, I don't know, something cigarette related. It's really kind of popping back here. Yeah, 
Yeah, Black Sky. I'm looking forward to it. WWR. Oh, my Lord. Uh, I don't know what I should even say about this company, Westwater. We talked about this company a lot when it had its big consolidation here. I should I should have yoloed it for sure. Big support on it though, but locking lacking a lot of volume. I don't I don't know what I would do with. It. I just wouldn't touch this one. See why do why? See why D Y is huge resistance here. I'd be careful. Low volume. I don't know. This this could this run could be over. But I'd be careful. Maybe it's gonna break four, but. You know, filled the gap already. Take care, Jonathan. No nicotine. Gotcha, Romoli. With the C C X X I I. Yeah, Mike, we're actually long SPFR. I'm not sure if you heard me talk about it just now. Uh, GNPK. But I'm I'm kind of nervous with SPFR. Genesis looks actually pretty good. NNOX, guys, is near some big support right now at 50. The Corey's back. Corey, you green? I hope you're green. Yeah, SoFi, the SPAC, um, IPOE, no? Yeah, we're, we're, we're long SoFi. We're not, yeah, we are, we're long. Smaller size, but we're long it. Been holding it for quite some time. What's up, Juan? 300 for the day, ching ching, man, congrats. Oh yeah, C E M I back in the game. Look at this one popping. I oh, gotcha, Corey. I'm a little confused what you mean, Jared. Uh, isn't that just the normal spec, or or what are you referring to? Feel free to post it in the Discord. I'll, I'll definitely check it out. It'll be a good conversation. Uh, Slava, I, I don't... Um, I never use this simulator. Uh, well, that's not true. Sometimes on TOS, I go to On Demand, which is the simulator. Um, and I'll, I'll test out certain features, but I only use simulators to test out features and platforms before I trade them in real life. I don't use them to practice my actual trading because I feel like um, the hardest part about trading is remaining rational. <laughs> but I, I don't advise really against simulators. I just know that it doesn't work for me. Yeah, Corey, it was hot. It was actually a pretty good um, open. Uh, actually, the open was kind of lame, but then, you know, at like 10 o'clock, XELB, you know, took over. You know, yeah, literally starting at like 10 o'clock, you know, there was a huge run up here. I missed it. I didn't even trade XELB. This was the hot ticker. Now it's on the backside. Got to be careful with the backside, guys. Never look for home runs on the backside.
Dang one. I can't believe you traded IGIC. Did it ever have its dead cat bounce? No, it didn't. Well, even like these little moves are sometimes 10%, which is kind of impressive. But it didn't even have its dead cat bounce. I, I don't know. I don't even bet mess with tickers like this. Heck yeah, Juan. Get that PC build looking nice. That's what it's all about. Oh, okay. That's actually a pretty decent return for two shares. Heck, what? No. Can't even beat. $39? Oh, I'm guessing you freaking... Where did you buy that then? 4 a.m.? Oh, did you buy this massive sell-off here? This big pullback? Holy macaroons, I would have freaking got a heart attack. It's a lot of stress. Yeah, 403, that's okay, that makes sense. You know, that's that's when the big dipski whipski happened. Alright guys, let's go ahead and wrap things up here. Um Wait, hold on. Mike's saying FTCV, FTCV, eToro. Oh, yeah, eToro. Mm. You know, I'm not a big fan of eToro, to be honest. But it doesn't mean I wouldn't trade it. Let's see here. Where's the text? Well, I know this says it. Uh, it's finding support again at 10. 10 is always my favorite area for these SPACs. I don't know why. It just seems to be a place that price likes to congregate. Um, it's definitely ranging. We had a nice dead cat bounce, found support, double bottom, moving higher. I'm not sure if we're going to pull back more than this, guys. This is looking pretty good. If if you're you know if you're a fan of the team of eToro right now there's more upside potential than downside potential this is this is a ticker I could probably get along with just based on the risk reward so um, overall this one looks pretty good I, I would probably consider trading FT uh, CV good call out for sure um, just eToro's you know I I, uh, I don't know <laughs> I. I I need to get my get my thesis on it a little bit more clear, but before I even comment on it, um, but just as a, as a broker, it's not my favorite. Yeah, ACY. Um, yeah, Slav. We you know ACY getting halted here, uh, left and right in the in the in the more market open, but um, it's actually nice crawling back to the upside here. Possible move to twenty or so. It's definitely definitely potential, but. Um, yeah, there's really not a but. I mean, heck, you know, if you feel like getting aggressive, I think ACY is a great opportunity, especially now that XELB is selling off a little bit. So, it's a little bit unfortunate that NNOX just really went to oblivion. Let's actually quickly look at it one last time. Yeah, found support, but I don't know. For me, NNOX and then CEMI were the main ones, and then XELB um, definitely was looking interesting. And honestly, we could write down ACY today because ACY had some really good opportunities. I think uh, some of you guys probably nailed this one. Yeah, I won. It's a it's a former runner, so you always you can't really um, discredit former runners because a lot of traders have them on their radar. I've traded this one several times myself. Yeah, for sure, Mike. That's definitely the play. I would I would go with it. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Uh, I'm going to wrap up. Thanks again for helping me reach the 15K, guys. I mean, that, you know, we're growing as a community. It's getting better and better. 
I think I think we've learned so much from each other. So I couldn't be more grateful for the uh, community we have here. And uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of excited to do some five day tra days again. But um, probably once I get back to my office, um, I need a little bit more consistency in my personal life. Uh, to be honest, this is, all this traveling is exhausting. Um, yeah. So thanks again, and uh, you know. Good luck trading everyone who's going to continue trading here. Um, remember, Common Collective, remember guys, you know, tickers sometimes fall off a cliff at this time. So just be very careful. You know, we've been seeing some offerings come around again around 11. So just be a little bit mindful here. Thanks, Rashawn, man. Really appreciate that. Green, 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 Ramoli. I like it. All right, guys. Peace out. The red horizontal line, Zaki, these are just my multi-month, multi-day support and resistance zones, kind of key pivot areas that I draw myself. For anyone else new here, guys, check out tradejournal.co forward slash connect and then go to the foundation video series, totally free series that will get you totally caught up to speed. I'll see you guys then first thing tomorrow morning. Like always, stay safe, make some awesome trades, and peace on out of here. Um, that's me. Ciao, cacao, guys.